Over the last century, hunger and malnutrition have been dramatically reduced around the world. Thanks mainly to increased food production. Ever improving agricultural methods have had a miraculous impact on public health, here in Ireland and around the world. But as the world's population continues to rise and our diets change, so too has the environmental impacts of food production. Globally, agriculture is now one of the primary drivers of climate change. Here in Ireland, agriculture accounts for more than a third of our greenhouse gas emissions. This is far higher than the global average. Our food production system is not sustainable and it's not ecologically sound. So how do we fix it? Over a quarter of the world's greenhouse gas emissions come from food production. And almost 70% of this comes from animal products. A recent UN report has found that without major reductions in emissions from agriculture, there's little hope of meeting the Paris Agreement goal of limiting global warming to below the critical two degrees Celsius. This is not good news for us here in Ireland, as our climate is especially suited for growing grass for livestock production. Does our beef and dairy industry have a future? I'm meeting environmental scientist Dr. Cara Augustenberg to find out exactly what it is about beef and dairy that makes it so damaging. So Cara, maybe we'll start by talking about why intensive livestock is so bad because obviously when you see cows grazing in a field it looks quite natural. Why is that so bad for the environment? What makes intensive livestock agriculture so damaging to climate change is threefold. First of all, the obvious one that every cow that we put on the land belches methane and more cows mean more methane. But two less obvious ones is in order to feed all those cows, we have to put a lot of fertilizer on the land. And fertilizer right now constitutes 15% of our emissions from agriculture. And the third thing that, that contributes to climate change is the fact that in order to feed all of these cows in Ireland, we have to import a lot of feed in the form of things like soybean and maize. And a lot of that comes from countries that are deforesting rainforests in order to create the land to be able to produce all that protein. So that has an additional impact on emissions. So we're actually importing the food. It's not that they're just sitting out there eating all the grass. We're producing carbon to import this food. Yeah, we don't actually have enough grass in Ireland right now to feed all the cows that we have in the country. So we are dependent on food imports. But you're saying intensive livestock farming. Is it the intensity that's the big problem? If we could produce uh, animals in a way that where we didn't require fertilizer inputs and we didn't require imported food, we could perhaps say that we have a sustainable livestock agriculture system. But as long as we're dependent on these outside inputs and we're adding more and more cows to the land, that's just a race to the bottom, both in terms of price and environmental impact. So it seems that the farmers are almost as much victims at the moment as, as anyone else. If you look at where the frustration is from the environmental community and from, from farmers, family farmers, it's actually directed more at, at agricultural policy than anything else. I mean, I, I think environmentalists have huge sympathy for the stress that farmers are under and for how important they are to our rural livelihoods and our rural economy. Uh, but really, we're, we're all headed in the wrong direction in terms of the vision of Irish agriculture at a national level. Livestock farming is made up of over 120,000 small individual family farms, which are the cultural and economic backbone of rural Ireland. Since the 1970s, farming practices have been shaped by policy. In recent years, that policy has been to intensify production and increase outputs. Meeting this demand has meant ever-increasing inputs of chemical fertilizers. These pollute rivers and lakes and release dangerous nitrous oxide emissions into the air. So with these chemical inputs, 
and the methane produced directly from livestock, isn't the obvious solution to both of these problems just to reduce the herd? But what would Irish farmers think about that? In recent years in Ireland, dairy farming especially has rapidly intensified. So I'm travelling to Cavan to meet Thomas Duffy, a dairy farmer and president of the Young Farmers Association, Macrina Ferma. At the moment, it's not easy to be in farming. It feels like sometimes farmers are public enemy number one. Are farmers aware of climate change? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the amount of, amount of conversations I have with, with farmers about climate change is actually incredibly high. And I think there is a, there's a perception that farmers are either denying climate change or not aware of climate change. I think that's absolutely untrue. So that's actually something that's really important because climate change isn't just something that's potentially being caused by feedstuffs and by farming. It's massively affecting farming as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like when I look at all the different professions, all the different sectors, farming will be the first that will be affected uh, overwhelmingly. I mean, I'm directly exposed here. I rely on the fact that it rains regularly and that I get enough sunshine. We have seen, like, even in this field, there would have been, um, you know, four foot of snow. And then within a couple of, of months, the entire place was burning with drought. So, Thomas, obviously the, the elephant in the room is the fact that farms, and, and especially dairy and beef farms, do produce an awful lot of carbon. Um, do farmers know about this? And, and what are they doing to fix this problem? So, I suppose farmers do. Uh, they are aware of the, the kind of the challenges. Sometimes they feel a little bit put upon compared to maybe other sectors. Um, what are we doing about it? I mean, there's there's kind of two sides to it. One, farmers are working on re actually offsetting the amount of carbon by you know increasing sequestration, planting hedgerows, these sort of matters. Then on top of that, we have the kind of the real challenge of reducing our our total output of emissions. That is the, the genuine challenge. How do we get total emissions down like the other sectors are trying to do? We can do things like genetics, we can improve and we can reduce the amount of fertilizers we're using and use them better so that we're reducing both our water, for, uh, our water pollution but also our carbon. The biggest challenge is going to be infrastructure investment because a lot of these things do require initial investment and unfortunately farming is such a low margin business that that can be very, very difficult to do. So what we need to see is we need to see direct incentives to increase the uptake of efficiency measures while also saying, you know, maybe there's, there's something more we need to do and there are models we can look at, results-based carbon schemes that we can look at. This is one of the things, Mocker is very much in favour of results-based schemes because they work better for farmers and they're easier to explain to farmers. Does the government really need to invest in dairy and beef farming or should we genuinely just talk about reducing the herd, reducing the amount that we're producing and changing our diet? So I suppose the, the problem with talking about reducing the national herd is how you actually go about it. Um, because if you say, OK, we're going to cut 10% of the herd, does that mean every farm has to cut by 10% or does that mean 30% of the largest have to cut by 30%? And, and ultimately what you're going to be doing is you're going to actually reduce the viability, the economic viability of farms straight away. So what you're talking about doing is actually reducing the ability of farms to adapt to climate change and you're going into a negative cycle straight away. And, and what farmers will do is inevitably what we've seen in other places, when there are punitive measures, there will be a political backlash and we will fail at that. What we need is we need a, you know, a bringing together. People need to feel like they're part of the solution. Farmers do want to be part of the solution, but they need to see the real kind of buy-in from everybody. It's heartening to know that there's a willingness amongst young Irish farmers to change. They understand the dangers of global warming. But the government and EU policy still incentivizes intensive farming and little else. Ireland's unique reliance on beef and dairy production makes ours the most carbon-intensive agriculture system per euro of food produced in all of Europe. But that said, I'm not convinced that shifting incentives at this stage will be enough on its own to meet our climate change targets. A recent paper from the UN's IPCC examined land use and its effect on climate change. Dr. Eamon Hawhey was one of the authors of this paper and I asked him what all this means for Irish agriculture. Globally, livestock production is a problem because it is a major contributor to, to climate change. So globally, we do need to see a reduction in livestock numbers, I would say. However, in places like Ireland, where we have land that's suitable for grasslands, we can't use all that land for other crops so easily. So I think there's a, a balance to be struck. And where there are animal source products like meat and dairy products, that they would come from 
low greenhouse gas emission systems. Many of the options to sustainable land management um, are available and we know what they are, but they're often not economically the most favourable. So in an economically driven system, um, unless we have some sort of incentives for uh, more sustainable land management, I don't think it's going to happen. And we need that to happen at, at a much faster rate. And where do these incentives come from? Well, in terms of farming in Europe, the incentives are part of the common agricultural policy um, and there are moves uh, in, in the, the revisions to the cap to make it more focused on environment and um, environment-based rewards for farmers. So we can't just keep the status quo, we can't keep going the way we're going, we have to change. We certainly do and we have to change rapidly if we're going to keep global warming well below 2 degrees Celsius and that requires reductions in greenhouse gas emissions from all sectors but we know if we don't limit global warming um, the land system is going to be under increasing pressure in the future. Things are going to become more drastic and food choices may eventually become restricted in the future, who knows, you know, if we, if we don't get a handle on this. The Common Agricultural Policy is currently under renegotiation so we'll have to wait to see how the EU's new policy will address agricultural emissions. But either way, action on climate change is far more urgent than any of these policies are reacting to. So what can be done to reduce emissions and pollution from farming now?